Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to add transport links for transporting products from one process to another process or from step to step. To give you a quick example, in the 3D world I have a layout open. I'll use my human transport controller to move products from this from conveyor process to a shelf buffer process, from the shelf buffer process to this to conveyor process. We no longer need our human workers for this, so we'll turn off the transport controller and then move my products to a sync process. So very quickly, I was able to add the transport links for moving my products to and from different processes. So if I run this simulation, turn off my flow, you can see everything is working fine. Our human workers are getting lots and lots of exercise. <laughs> Make sure they drink water. So at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, how did you do that? Well, I'll show you. Let's reset and undo my work. I'll click the flow button. And an easy way to select all these links is you can go down to your process flow editor here. And in between each step, you can click the transition icon. And that will select all of the links that can be used to go from that previous step to the next step. So you can see in the 3D world from my from conveyor process, I have these links. I'll right click and delete them. Do the same for the shelf buffer to conveyor, right click and delete. And then from to conveyor to sync, click the transition, right click one of those transport links and delete all of them. So now what we can do is add the links ourselves, but you have a couple of different ways. One way is a one to one connection. You also have the options of a one to many connection a many-to-one connection, and a many-to-many -many connection. So I'll show you all four ways. Let's start with one-to-one -one connection. That's probably what you're most familiar with. In our case, we already have our process steps defined. I'll use my human transport controller. And now let's add a link from this node to this node. So it's from conveyor. Click the transport node. Sometimes you have to reset. And then I point at this transport node, and you can see the preview, it's a one-to-one -one connection. So from this transport node to this one, source to destination, click the node, and now I have that link. If you want to undo your work, you can press the Control and Z key to make the link go away. So that is a one-to-one -one connection. I'll show you again what I can do. Let's clear my selection. Select this transport node, and now go to this node here. Simple as that. Notice that I have four conveyor lines which have the same process name, so they are grouped together. So another option I can use for adding these links is a many-to-one connection. So I'm connecting the transport nodes in this process from conveyor to another node in one process. So what I can do is go to my process flow editor, select the from conveyor process, the step here, and now if I go back to this transport node and click its label, you can see now it's outlined in blue. So that indicates the process is selected. And now if I point at that node again in the shelf buffer, notice it will create four links from the conveyors to this node here. And it should work. So if I run the simulation, we should see the boxes moving to this rack here. But we don't want that, right? We want to use the other racks as well as moving to the conveyors. So let's reset, and once again, to get rid of these links, I can go to my process steps, click the transition, right-click one of the links, and delete. The last two ways of adding transport links involve selecting a process, and what this does, it's a different type of workflow. It will actually add these steps for you in the flow editor, for example, when you're creating links to a process. So what I'll do is I will quickly delete all these steps, that's one, but I can hold on the control key and select the other ones. And then delete the selected ones. And now for a one to many connection, what I can do is click this transport node. And when a product arrives at this conveyor, I want it to be able to tr be transported to any of these racks, not just this one. So what I can do is point at a transport node in that process of shelf buffer. But this time, I can mouse over the label for the process name of shelf buffer. And notice I now get a preview for adding links to all of those transport nodes with 
the process of the same name. So if I click the label, I now have those links. And if I run the simulation again, you'll see the products will flow to either of these racks. So it seems the workers are filling up this rack first, <laughs> but eventually they will use the other ones. Now, another thing to notice is that when I click that label of the process, it added it as a step here in my flow group, flow group number one for my boxes. So notice now the human workers are using this rack. So that's a many, I'm sorry, that's a one to many connection. But we want to use our other conveyors as well. So what I'll do to undo my work is I'll press the Control and Z key to get rid of all those links. And this time, what I'll do is I'll clear my selection. And instead of clicking the transport node, it could be any of these nodes here from our conveyor, I'll now click the label from conveyor. And notice it highlighted the transport node or outlined it blue. That means the process is selected. And it also added it as a step in my flow group. So now what I'm showing you is a many-to-many -many connection. So all the transport nodes in a group of processes can then be connected via transport links to all the transport nodes in another process or a group of processes. In our case, from the conveyor process to our shell buffer, just by pointing at the label here. So if I zoom out, this is what I showed you in the beginning of the video. I am connecting all the transport nodes in my from conveyor process to all the transport nodes in this shelf buffer process or the processes that have the same name. Automatically processes with the same name are grouped together. So now if I click the label, pay attention not only to the 3D world, but the process flow editor. It adds the links. It also adds the step. So now we can continue this. Let's add links from all the nodes in our shelf buffer process to our two conveyor process, these nodes here. So notice the blue outline, the shelf buffer process is already selected for us. So now all I have to do, we don't want a many to one connection, we want a many to many connection. So now I will point at the label of the process of that transport node called two conveyor. Click the label, now I have the links and the step is added here in the process steps. Going forward, we're going to have a many-to-one connection, but we do want to add the process itself as a step in our flow editor. So what I'm going to do is turn off the human transport controller here because we want to use our conveyor system. The two conveyor process is still selected. And if I point at the note here, it will add the transport links, but it won't add the sync as a step in the flow group. So I can just quickly point at the label of the process Click it to add the links and also add the step. So that's basically what I did in the beginning of the video. And if I run the simulation, everything should still work. If we want, we can filter our transport links. So now it's only showing the links that go to our currently selected process, the sync. Human workers are running frantically. Imagine this is like uh, that magical store called uh, IKEA or IKEA. Or you could also adapt this to maybe like um, a stocking simulation for a grocery store if you wanted to, or other areas that interest you. Just a simple demo. So now I can turn off my flow editor. And what I'll do is let's see how things work out after about an hour in this simulation. So I'll run it super fast, up to about an hour. And after an hour, I'll take my foot off the gas. And yep, everything's still working out. Sometimes the products go to a rack, sometimes they go straight to the conveyor system when there is a need for them. I do want to get some information about my workers to see where they walked. So I'll select the human transport controller here. And then it's component properties. It has this button called show traffic. If I click it, oh, wow, well, we will. We can see an indication of where they have been walking. So it seems they were quite busy in this middle section. That's probably expected as well as around each of the receiving ends here in this conveyor system and a little bit on the sides here. But yep, yeah, you can click the transport controller again, show traffic to update it. So if we actually reset, run it again, let me slow it down for you. So now there's four products. Let's see the human workers are walking there, but we can get some statistics. Let's see, show traffic. And they're mostly walking over here.
Okay, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.